Welcome to God's Mercy and Truth is in Everything. From the Guide for the Perplexed by Maimonides, Vegetarian, Part 2 of 2, on Words of Wisdom. Maimonides, also known as Harambam, or Rabbi Moses ben Maimon, was a notable medieval Jewish philosopher, astronomer, physician, and intellectual figure. Born into a prominent family in Spain, Maimonides' path eventually led him to Morocco and Palestine until he finally settled down in Egypt, in al fosta near Cairo. Shortly after moving to Egypt, life-changing events urged him to start his practice as a physician. Having a background of medical studies, it was not long before Maimonides became renowned in the area and became the personal physician to the Sultan Saladin, a famous Muslim military leader. His schedule also included tending to other patients, lecturing before fellow physicians, and after becoming a leader of the Jewish community, teaching and helping its members. Famous works by Maimonides include Mishneh Torah, a commentary on the Talmud, and The Guide for the Perplexed, philosophical discussions regarding theological matters. A revered pillar of the Jewish world, Rabbi Moses ben Maimon also had a significant influence on some great medieval writers and thinkers, such as Baruch Spinoza and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, as well as an important impact on the medical science archives. Let us now continue with a selection from Part 3, Chapter 12, from Rabbi Moses ben Maimon's book entitled, The Guide for the Perplexed. Here, we'll see that the eye-opening wisdom of the Jewish philosopher is still relevant today. The third class of evils comprises those which everyone causes to himself by his own action. In reference to this kind of evil, Solomon says, The foolishness of man perverteth his way. In the following passage, he explains also that this kind of evil is man's own work. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright. But they have thought out many inventions, and these inventions bring the evils upon him. The same subject is referred to in Job, verse 6. For affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground. These words are immediately followed by the explanation that man himself is the author of this class of evils. But man is born unto trouble. This class of evils originates in man's vices, such as excessive desire for eating, drinking, and love. Indulgence in these things in undue measure or in improper manner or partaking of bad food. This course brings diseases and afflictions upon body and soul alike. The sufferings of the body in consequence of these evils are well known. Those of the soul are twofold. First, such evils of the soul as are the necessary consequence of changes in the body insofar as the soul is a force residing in the body. It has therefore been said that the properties of the soul depend on the condition of the body. Secondly, the soul, when accustomed to superfluous things, acquires a strong habit of desiring things which are neither necessary for the preservation of the individual nor for that of the species. This desire is without a limit whilst things which are necessary are few in number and restricted within certain limits. But what is superfluous is without end. For example, you desire to have your vessels of silver, but golden vessels are still better. Others have even vessels of sapphire, or perhaps they can be made of emerald or rubies, or any other substance that could be suggested. Those who are ignorant in their thought are constantly in trouble and pain because they cannot get as much of superfluous things as a certain other person possesses. When they thus meet with the consequences of the course which they adopt, they complain of the decrees and judgments of God. 
they begin to blame the time and wonder at the want of justice in its changes, that it has not enabled them to acquire great riches. The error of the ignorant goes so far as to say that God's power is insufficient because he has given to this universe the properties which they imagine cause these great evils and which do not help all evil disposed persons to obtain the evil which they seek and to bring them to the aim of their desires, though these, as we have shown, are really without limit. The virtuous and wise, however, see and comprehend the wisdom of God displayed in the universe. Thus David says, All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For those who observe the nature of the universe and the commandments of the law and know their purpose, see clearly God's mercy and truth in everything. They seek, therefore, that which the Creator intended to be the aim of man, namely, comprehension. Forced by the claims of the body, they seek also that which is necessary for the preservation of the body, bread to eat and garment to clothe, and this is very little. But they seek nothing superfluous, with very slight exertion man can obtain it, so long as he is contented with that which is indispensable. All the difficulties and troubles we meet in this respect are due to the desire for superfluous things. When we seek unnecessary things, we have difficulty even in finding that which is indispensable. For the more we desire to have that which is superfluous, the more we meet with difficulties. Our strength and possessions are spent in unnecessary things and are wanting when required for that which is necessary. Observe how nature proves the correctness of this assertion. The more necessary a thing is for living beings, the more easily it is found, and the cheaper it is. The less necessary it is, the rarer and dearer it is. For example, air, water, and food are indispensable to man. Air is most necessary, for if man is without air a short time, he dies. Whilst he can be without water a day or two, air is also undoubtedly found more easily and cheaper than water. Water is more necessary than food, for some people can be four or five days without food, provided they have water. Water also exists in every country in larger quantities than food, and is also cheaper. The same proportion can be noticed in the different kinds of food. That which is more necessary in a certain place exists there in larger quantities, and is cheaper than that which is less necessary. No intelligent person, I think, considers musk, amber, rubies, and emerald as very necessary for man except as medicines, and they, as well as other like substances, can be replaced for this purpose by herbs and minerals. This shows the kindness of God to his creatures, even to us weak beings. His righteousness and justice as regards all animals are well known, for in the transient world there is among the various kinds of animals no individual being distinguished from the rest of the same species by a peculiar property or an additional limb. On the contrary, all physical and vital forces and organs that are possessed by one individual are found also in the other individuals. If anyone is somehow different, it is by accident, in consequence of some exception and not by a natural property. It is also a rare occurrence. There is no difference between individuals of a species in the due course of nature. The difference originates in the various dispositions of their substances. This is the necessary consequence of the nature of the substance of that species. The nature of the species is not more favorable to one individual than to the other. It is no wrong or injustice that one has many bags of 
finest myrrh and garments embroidered with gold, while another has not those things which are not necessary for our maintenance. He who has them has not thereby obtained control over anything that could be an essential addition to his nature, but has only obtained something illusory or deceptive. The other, who does not possess that which is not wanted for his maintenance, does not miss anything indispensable. He that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. This is the rule at all times and in all places. No notice should be taken of exceptional cases as we have explained. In these two ways, you will see the mercy of God towards His creatures, how He has provided that which is required in proper proportions, and treated all individual beings of the same species with perfect equality. In accordance with this correct reflection, the chief of the wise men says, All His ways are judgment. David likewise says, All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. He also says expressly, the Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. For it is an act of great and perfect goodness that He gave us existence, and the creation of the controlling faculty in animals is a proof of His mercy towards them. Respected viewers, we thank you for your company for today's program, God's Mercy and Truth is in Everything. From the Guide for the Perplexed by Maimonides, Vegetarian, Part 2 of 2 on Words of Wisdom.